So are bacteria good or bad? I reckon they're pretty bad. Mostly it's bad. I think it's bad. It is pretty bad. It's mostly bad. Bad. Bacteria. They are everywhere. In everything you touch. In everywhere you go. But are we wrong? So, what are bacteria? To find that out, we have to backtrack. 2.7 to 2.9 billion years ago, the world was essentially a big ball of hot, bubbling mess being bombarded with meteors and colliding with a bunch of nearby materials floating around in space. In the midst of this all, bacteria appeared. To put it simply, bacteria are microscopic, single-celled organisms that are nearly everywhere. Your keyboard, bacteria. Your toothbrush, bacteria. Your intestines, bacteria. In fact, right now, all of the bacteria cells in your body outnumber the human ones 10 to 1. By definition, a bacterium is a prokaryote, which means it doesn't have a nucleus like our cells do. Living cells with a nucleus are generally called eukaryotes. Bacteria come in three different shapes, rods, spheres and spirals. Bacteria can also be either gram positive with a plasma membrane, periplasmic space and a simple outer layer, or they can be gram negative with all of those things plus an outer membrane including protein. Finally, they have all of their genetic information put into one tiny loop of DNA. When bacteria reproduce using a process called binary fission, they grow big enough to split in half. This can go on and on and on very quickly. Within 10 hours, one bacteria could turn into one billion. Now we know what bacteria are, we can go in depth on a couple. Take Lactobacillus. This guy was probably in your cereal this morning. Lactobacillus is a gram-positive bacterium, also classified as a lactic acid bacterium, and it's generally used in dairy food and drink production to ferment various ingredients. Without it, we would have no cheese, yogurt, milk, even pickles. There are, however, bacteria that are not so useful to humans. One of the big scares out there is Salmonella, more specifically Salmonella enterica, found in all warm-blooded animals. Certain strains of this bacteria can have disastrous consequences, causing serious illnesses such as typhoid fever, and as well being to blame for the bad case of food poisoning you got from the sushi shop last week. It's bacteria like these that cause the fear factor surrounding the scary concept of bacteria. So I find bacteria to be completely fascinating. Uh, one of the things I, I love about being a microbiologist is that bacteria can do things that we definitely cannot do. So there are bacteria that can live at 100 degrees Celsius, like in boiling conditions. There are bacteria that can live in nuclear power plants and withstand huge amounts of radiation and completely repair their DNA. Bacteria, they do so many useful things, they do so many amazing things. We don't really need products that have extra antibacterial activities above that. And to be honest, many of those products are actually selecting for bacteria that will be resistant to those products. And so by using them, we're contributing to them not working at all anymore. And the other thing to remember, I guess, is that even though there are bacteria on all of the surfaces around us, many of those surfaces are not very likely to have pathogens on them. Every bacterium is just trying to make more copies of itself, just like we are. It certainly has something that it's involved to be good at, and that's why it's alive, and that's why it's good at doing what it does. So are bacteria good or bad? For most bacteria, they're generally pretty good, but there are a few that are quite harmful to us, such as pathogens. It depends what type of bacteria it is. Uh, I think it can be both.